Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, I have the privilege, or first of all, hi, I'm JJ from uh, the IBM developer Twitch stream. Um, I am a developer advocate and I am a Helm newbie. Well, no, that's not completely true. Um, if you've seen some of the other streams I've been on, uh, I've, I've attempted to play with Helm. And today, luckily, I have one of the core developers of Helm with me, Martin, uh, or Martin Hickey. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, thanks, JJ. So um, as JJ said, my name is Martin Hickey. I'm a developer in uh, IBM in the uh, Open Technology Group, and I'm also a Helm Core maintainer. And uh, yeah, I'm just delighted to be here on my uh, first stream with uh, JJ today. So uh, I'm putting all my trust in his hands. So yeah. <laughs> anything goes wrong, I'm going to blame JJ. So we'll, we'll go with that. That's great. That's great. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to stream for a little bit of time. Uh, we, we dubbed this, this stream um, Helm Under the Hood. Uh, so we're going to actually dig, dig into some stuff. Um, I'm going to ask Martin to share his screen here in a moment. Uh, and then he can kind of show kind of what he's planning on doing. And I'm here to answer questions. Or sorry, not answer questions, but ask him questions. So please use the chat if you want to ask questions. Uh, Martin's going to be working. And I'm just kind of here to, to be the facilitator for the audience. Um, and also, I have fun, no fun noises in case we do really cool stuff. So, um, <laughs> Martin, uh, do you, you want to take it away, sir? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. All right, can you see my shared screen, JJ? Yes, yes, it's wonderful. Thank you. So, folks, I'll be swapping over and back. So, unfortunately, you might see the side of my head, uh, depending on how this goes. Um, so what we're going to kind of have a look at today, and this is this going to be broad because we could go down any rabbit hole here. I'm not really sure where we'll take it uh, in the sense that which way it will take us. Because as I was saying to, to uh, JJ earlier, look, we're going to have a look under the hood here because a lot of questions seem to come up out in the Helm community from people going, look, you know, you, you deploy your apps and you can use the command. You know, so... Probably in the background here, I'm not really going to go into uh, how to use Helm because there's a lot of talks out there. There are a lot of documentations. I'd suggest go to helm.sh, the community uh, webpage, and go into the docs from there because uh, we're always trying to improve those docs. And if you have any feedback, uh, please let us know, raise an issue, or, or, or basically just ping us out in the Slack or put it into one of the Slack channels, um, Helm users, Helm dev, uh, in the Kubernetes uh, Slack workspace. So I don't really want to go into everything Helm does, but basically Helm allows you, I suppose the, the name it has been given is the package manager for Kubernetes. And what it does is it allows you to deploy applications out into Kubernetes and then manage the life cycle of that application. Not the Kubernetes resources that are out there, but the application itself, keeping historical information of that release every time you deploy it or upgrade that release, okay? So that's really where, where its key is and the ability to deploy them out. So I'm not gonna, as I say, I'm not gonna go into that too much, but what we wanna look at is, and a lot of people see that is, if you wanna see your releases, you run the command, and I'll show them in it, Helm LS or Helm List, and that will say to you, what applications uh, have I deployed? Uh, now these applications are deployed by putting the, um, the, the uh, template files, which are a 10 layer, uh, on top of your normal Kubernetes man manifest files, a tin layer of um, of um, of a, a, a YAML template language, uh, the Go template language, and um, you want to know how many deployed out there. And generally, you run Helm list, and it comes back and it tells you all the information. But what happens sometimes if no information comes back, but you still think it's there because you go to deploy again a chart with that particular name, and it tells you that name already exists or whatever. So we want to have a look at that today, where where does the information go? Where's the historical information stored for Helm? And we'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, I have a few things um, up here. Can you see that um, kind of agenda? Um, yep. Yeah. Um, thanks, JJ. So we'll just have a look at, so there's um, we, a new release of Helm was um, uh, caught in, um, in November, 2019 called Helm 3. And, uh, there are a lot of changes under the hood between Helm 3 and Helm 2. Um, that doesn't affect 
the normal user that's using it as is because the API and how you render your charts and deploying have stayed the same. But for somebody who maybe is doing more advanced stuff and likes to go in the back door, what we'll do today, there will be changes here. And, and what are those changes? So we'll take a look at them. So we'll deploy apps with V2, V3. So I have two versions running on, on, um, on a system I have here. I'm just using uh, Kind as, um, as my uh, Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to use probably version 115. We'll have a look at 116 then, and I'll explain that in a while because of some issues that can happen between um, in Kubernetes 1.16. We'll just look and see how it is. We look at migrations, and then we'll also look at maybe going in, editing the release on the fly uh, and see what happens there then. A lot of what we're doing today is probably more for advanced users and anything we do here today, I'd say do it with a word of caution because you can hose your system. You can hose mm. your, your helm and you can get it into a state where you will not be able to use it anymore. So I suppose so the, quick, quick, the... Quick question. Yeah, sorry. A quick question. So you said that we're, what we're going to be doing could hose our instance of Helm. What is the best way to unhose it in this in this state? Like, because you just warned me, what we're going to be learning could basically break my system. Yeah. So what what what, what should I do if this does break? Well, if it does, all right. Worst case scenario, you lose all your release information. Okay. Okay. Or your okay. release information becomes unusable. And what it means then is you need to manually go in, clear out that release information which you're looking at, and then go in and manually clear out the Kubernetes resources that were deployed. Got so it. in a way, what you could do is the app that you'd run in, you could potentially make it unusable. Uh, Got it. Or how would I put it? Unmanageable, I will say is the word. So it can be still running, but afterwards, if you want to do anything else to it, you have to do it manually yourself through Kubernetes, if that makes Got sense. Got it. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. So the, the simile I'd use here is, is it's kind of similar to having your application in a back-end database. And instead of going in through the application interface, you go into the back-end database and start doing stuff. Um, you can do it, but like anything, there's a hell warning with it. So yeah, you do it at your own cost. So kind of what I want to do here is to just show people today how you're going into the hood, uh, but with the uh, warning of uh, uh, be careful what you're doing and maybe it'll be impossible to manage your, your release afterwards. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's the warning. Okay, so I think I think we'll kick off. What do you think, JJ? This sounds great. Yeah, let's give, yeah, let's give it a go, okay? So, uh, right, let's start with, so one thing we're gonna start with here is we're going on, uh, as I say, um, I have two versions of Helm running, uh, of Helm 2. And I have Helm 3 running. Now, both of them look like they have a version of old API, but um, yeah, that doesn't matter. So if I go here like this, so Helm 3 LS lists basically the, um, the um, uh, charts you've deployed or the apps you've mm -hmm. deployed, okay? So if I go Helm 3 uninstall, uh, old API, You can see that's gone now, but mm -hmm. if I go back to Helm 2, that's still there. Because okay. essentially, they're looking at different release information, okay? Mm -hmm. And this will be important around the migration, okay? So how it stores that information and then the name it uses to store that information differs between Helm 2 and Helm 3. And mm -hmm. uh, that's quite important, but we'll look at that in a minute. So first of all, let's, let's, let's get a chart out there, okay? All right, so I'm going to... So I'm just going to copy a few commands from here. Then um, you see in me um, do, trying to type the whole time because my <laughs> typing is rubbish. So um, I don't hey, want it, you laugh. It, it only gets worse when people are watching you, right? It only does. Ex exactly. <laughs> to be honest, I think it's bad at the best of times. And I don't want to be mocked actually by this. So yeah, if you, yeah, if you want to mock me, mock me for something else. So what we're going to do here is we're going to deploy um, um, what we call a, a scaffold chart. So if you're doing this, there's a command called helm create, and you give it the name of a chart, and it'll, it'll spit out a scaffold chart, which is a very basic chart, but what it gives you is a Nginx web server that can be deployed out, okay? So it's a pretty 
it's basic, but a nice little app that can run, uh, has your web server running out on the uh, cluster, okay? So I'm not going to, I created one earlier and I called it nginx.demo because I don't really have, uh, I'm not that, um, you know, creative. I couldn't think of a better name. And I did, in fact, if I gave it a name like, I don't know, Donald Duck, then I wouldn't find the thing that I was uh, going to deploy. So I'm going to go with this, if that's okay. And the command I use here is install. For install, I give it the name of the, um, the instance. So this is what it's going to be called uh, by Helm, because the chart really is your template that you want to create out. The mm -hmm. instance then is the release or the instance that's, that's deployed out by uh, Helm. Do you have a mm -hmm. question, JJ? No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And we're going to put it into a namespace I created earlier called demo-1. And we'll just do that so that we can see our resources a lot easier and stuff like that, okay? Um, actually, uh, Martin, can you can you make your font uh, bigger, please? We've had a request to make it okay. a little bit bigger. How's that? I, I would go a couple more just to be on the safe side. Hopefully, it won't be too bad and break the terminal. Oh, that's the Yes, there we go. That's good. Yeah, no, we'll miss bits of information off the screen, but... We'll, we'll, let's go with it and let's see. Okay, we all okay? Yep. All right, not a bother. All right, let's hit this. Okay, yay, it deployed, thank goodness. So two <laughs> things, first of all, first of all, you get this information fed back. Now, uh, will we look at this or will we not look at this? Uh, we'll see. So basically the Nginx server is now running, okay? Um, and we'll have a look at it in a minute to see if it deployed okay. It says it deployed okay. And what do you do is you get these notes back as well. So uh, when you're using Helm, you know, you can put a notes file into the chart and that tells the user of your chart that's deploying your chart something you can do with it. So we could do a quick test. Do we want to do a quick test to see it's running? Um, uh, yes. JJ, what do you think yourself? Absolutely. Ab or will, absolutely. Or, or will we end yep. up in some some mess maybe if we go doing this? I don't know. Uh, let's no, I see. Think we'll, I, let's prove. Like, don't, you got to show that it actually works, right? Like, we see a bunch of text, but I've always liked yeah. to see that Nginx site, right? Okay. I knew you'd put me on the spot. God damn you. <laughs> so where we're going to do this is I'm going to put this. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Let's see where. Aha. Uh -huh, I have a little terminal here on the back. Now, you're not going to see this terminal because I have this on small. Okay. So let's just mm -hmm. hit this here. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the command here. I'm going to put a port forward here. So what it's going to do is it's going to map this port. And basically, when I do, uh, it's going to map this port to the Nginx server running inside in the uh, pod, inside in the cluster. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to then do a curl on, on the port 8080, and that will map to 80 inside. All right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is put the port forward first. Okay. All right. Let's hit that. Excellent. <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, do you need an export port name? Yeah, port I need name? my export port name. Yeah, so there we go. It's all good. So there you go, folks. This is what happens when you do these things. You never, you never <laughs> read properly. So what we need to do first here. So this is this is why you have a series of instructions, and you mm -hmm. should follow them. <laughs> so what I did there was I have no definition for the port name, and the definition is given here, and it looks like a big long command, but really what it is is it's trying to get the name of your particular pod. That has been deployed out. So it's going to have a specific name. All right. So if we look at, uh, I'll just, I'll export it here for a second. Um, if we look at, because I think probably before we even run this, we should say, right, uh, did it deploy? Okay. There we go. I can't spell. <laughs> okay. So it's telling us it did deploy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's check. Uh, what namespace did we put it in? Demo one, was it? Yes, demo one. Okay. So you can see here we have, can people see this? So we can see here we have a pod running and like, you're not going to get that crazy name. So, um, no. we could take that name now and use it, but let's use, let's use the export on it. We can see here it's running and it all, all looks good. Okay. So let's see. All right. Can we get at this? Okay, and let's do a port forward on this. Not found. Okay, mm. why is that not found? Oh, here we go. Because we deployed it into namespace demo one, not the default. So what I've done here is I'm using, um, as I said, a kind cluster, and I'm 
just using the default namespace at the moment. So if we put things into namespaces, we just need to specifically tape, say the namespace. Uh, okay, port forward is there. And let's do a curl on, what did it say to do a curl so, on? So right. while you're doing that, Martin, do you mind talking about the castle behind you? It seems that uh, we've had some questions about it. Is that yours? Uh, <laughs> that is, <laughs> uh, 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 how would I answer this? Yes, it, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. <laughs> this is a castle um, uh, near me. So uh, yeah, I decided to put it as my background because uh, I couldn't think if animals or crazies will jump out from behind me. So uh, <laughs> I was hoping that this would hide the fact that, uh, yeah, I'm uh, everything's a mess behind me. So yeah, it, it's a castle. <laughs> Hopefully people Works. like it. Actually, it's it's still intact and the whole lot. So they've done a lot of work in it. So it's it's good because um, you know we used to have a lot of castles in Ireland, but uh, most of them are gone at this stage. So yeah, mm. okay. Thanks. All right. This is I I like this streaming tick because obviously any kind of question can come in, can it? Oh uh, yeah, pretty much anything. Oh like, right, cool. uh, anything. And it's uh, it's actually Paul. Paul's asking these questions. Uh, Who's he Paul? said, uh, Paul Tchaikovsky. Hey uh, Paul, how's it going? Uh, if he held up a sword, he'd really be an, or, an ordinary Irish he-man. So all I got to do is get a sword now and just be like... <laughs> By the power of uh, gray skulls, is it? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm glad this is a serious uh, stream. <laughs> <laughs> serious topics. Uh, okay, let's curl this and let's see what happens. Right. Ah, we get it back. Um, also, see, did we get... No, not... Excellent. Not but you can see, see here, we just get the landing page for Nginx, and you can see. So that's a handy thing if you're ever playing around with Helm, actually. Helm Create is a nice way of giving you a very simple um, uh, scaffold chart for, for trying stuff out, okay? So I have now lost my train of thought, which is great. Um, <laughs> so what was I going to do next? Oh, yeah. Okay, so what are we here to do at all? We're here to see, right, okay. So now, up to now, we've been pretty much using the Helm API. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, bar we called uh, kubectl to see or kubectl, whatever we want to call it, to see what uh, resources were deployed. Okay, but you'd normally do that anyway because, um, well, you can do a Helm status and see see what you have. But let's let's normally you're going to check it that way. So what I want to do now is, so when I go Helm to ls, where is this information coming from? Okay, yeah. um, no, I'll ask you a question, uh, JJ. Actually, while we're at mm -hmm. it. Because um, this is the one where, you know, you're going to ask me the questions, but I start asking you questions, you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. You, you probably know this, but where do you think this uh, release information is stored? A, in the system you're running on, in mm -hmm. some paging or a cache or something like that, or B, in the cluster? I'm hoping it'd be in the cluster. I don't actually know. Okay. Um, and why because... would you like it? To be in the cluster, because I'd imagine you could you would have multiple people using Helm to deploy stuff, and they would need to and multiple people need to be able to know the status of the different Helm charts being deployed. So you'd be able to like pull from the, the cluster, knowing the state of what the cluster is in. That's what I would imagine. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a that's a a very good answer. Yeah, okay. Um, no, I think uh, yeah, that's kind of that is pretty much sums it up. So. What we're going to do now is, all right, we're going to, okay. So an interesting fact that a few minutes ago, we did a get all. I'm fairly sure we did a get all. Uh, we did. And we saw here that pretty much it's the Nginx, the app we deployed that's in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting with this is no. So where does this release information get stored? Because You'd be thinking, you know, but we're on Helm V2 at the moment. You'd be thinking mm -hmm. it would be something to do with namespace demo one. So yeah. for Helm V2, it worked a bit differently, okay? By default, it, when you... Ins yeah, sorry. Was it a, was it a, uh, a SQLite database sitting on my, inside my no, namespace? No, 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 not at all, actually. <laughs> it's, um, so Helm V2 used config maps by default, okay? Ah, okay. But... Here was the part of it was it stored the config maps in the namespace of your Tiller instance. Okay. Oh. All right. So a lot of people often wondered, you know, where, why were all these config maps inside in Cube system? Okay. Mm -hmm. So 
if you use Tiller, if you use Helm 2 out of the box, it installed the Tiller namespace in God mode inside in the cube system namespace. All right. Which wasn't, you know, mm-hmm. you know, the most secure way of doing it. But that was just by default. You could secure it up then by, um, by basically using our back on it, um, by using a different namespace, etc., and uh, also by using TLS, etc., on it. Okay, mm-hmm. to connect mm-hmm. to the server. So that's the difference with Helm too. It needs this Tiller service running inside in the um, running inside in your um, your um, your cluster. So if you do um, uh, one thing, I'll say to you as well. And this actually mm-hmm. catches me every now and again. When you're specifying namespaces with the Helm command, don't use minus N, because that's oh. actually the, sh- the shortcut for name. And what you end up with <laughs> is you can't figure out where your instance is, and you're looking inside in this namespace, and there's no sign of it. But actually, it didn't go into the namespace. It went to, into your default namespace that you're using, and uh, that's why. And it's put the name with that on it. So just beware of that one. It catches yeah, me, me every, now, every now and again. Th- Tell me there's an issue about that, like that there's going to be a change in a version because like, people, people, I know I use dash n all the time, right? Yeah. Like, I'd know? say, I can I know is there an issue off the top of my head? I don't actually. So maybe like it might be worth raising an issue actually. And, uh, yeah, because I- people, people have people have muscle memory now, right? Using using kubectl. So if Helm has a breaking difference with that, that's going to to your point. You're gonna, people are going to get caught by that real fast. Yeah, I think someone's going to raise an issue on that if it hasn't been raised already. There was something about it, but I can't think of it now. But all right, let's get back to this one for the moment. Uh, okay, so if we go like this, we'll now find do, 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 this guy, this pod here, starting mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Till, tiller.deploy, okay? Yes. So that is basically your Tiller instance deployed out there. You can potentially have one, two, M, Tiller instances in your cluster, um, if you want, and obviously that'd be, excuse me, <coughs> sorry about that. That would be a type no of segregation if you wanted to do that. In this out of the box uh, simple cluster I'm using, I'm just using Tiller as is. Um, so uh, yeah, it's just one instance that's running. Okay, so back to it again. What was I going? I was going to show right. <clears throat> Let's try and get this release information, okay? Mm-hmm. So a couple of ways of doing this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, some labels on it to start with, and then I'll remove the label. Actually, I'll remove the labels first. It'd be better. Okay. The labels are just handy, um, especially when you're showing something. Uh, get out of that. Okay. So when we now search for config maps in the mm-hmm. system namespace, we suddenly see, no, there will always be config maps for different things um, uh, belong to the cluster. But if we look down here, we can see these guys, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. So they're quite interesting. And they don't look like they belong to the system. And one looks like the instance I deployed. And the other looks like a release I talked about earlier, old API.chart1. So for every revision or version of your Helm release. So, you know, you can go Helm install and deploy your, your chart, okay? And mm-hmm. let's say it's called release FUBAR. Mm-hmm. And you might come along and make changes then and do an upgrade. Mm-hmm. So what happens in that situation is that then goes to revision or for want of a better word, version two, okay? Mm-hmm. And there are incremental versions up along. So that's why when you look in here, I obviously have upgraded old API release and it's mm-hmm. now on release two, version two, yep. okay? So that's the nomenclature is the release name uh, with a postfix of dot, uh, whatever version V1 to whatever. <clears throat> okay. And you can see here, because we only did one deployment of this guy, uh, Nginx dem- demo, ins one, excuse me, uh, there's only V1 basically on that. So, so that's our config. That? Can we see that actual config map real quick? Like just doing O dash O YAML? Are- we are going to we are going to look at that actually. Oh, okay. Um, All right. <laughs> we are doing that next. 
Yes. <laughs> See, I'm a man with a plan. Uh, <laughs> it looks raw. It looks rough. <laughs> All right. So a handy little thing if you want to specifically get at it. And look, there's mostly out here with better Kubernetes experience than I have even. So <laughs> I just stick in the, um, the nice uh, label. Mm -hmm. So for Helm V2, uh, it's all in caps, the, uh, the property names. So owner is equal to and tiller is in caps. So uh, it gets the, um, it gets the uh, uh, labels of owner equal to tiller. And then I give a name of whatever the name of my release is. And what that will do, it will return all the release versions for that particular release. Okay. So that's a handy little one to have. Just be careful, like, owner and tiller and name and stuff they're in caps in v2 when we go to v3 they're in uh, small so mm. you know um <laughs> that's just to keep you on your toes i think is, is what that is about. okay all right so one last thing too in helm v2 from i don't know what release on maybe 2.8 or something e, the uh, con uh, functionality was added to allow you to configure tiller to store uh, the release information as secrets. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's important. We go to V3 because V3 uses secrets by default. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, all right. You can configure to use config maps, but you know, you're probably better off using secrets. Um, mm -hmm. Even though, you know, secrets are only base 64 in code. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, Actually, yeah. probably be better on that. So that's just one thing to watch. So, what JJ asked is a very good question, and what we're kind of going to go on to know, and there's a little bit to this, okay? Um, and in a few minutes, when we get through this, I'll show somewhere where you can get more information on this if you want, okay? So what we want to do is we want to um, basically get, uh, we want to get, uh, have a look at what's in underneath the hood here, okay? So mm -hmm. uh, let's have a go at this, all right? Uh, let's get the YAML first, okay? What I'm going to do is, and there's a reason for this because it might be a bit easier, I'm going to pipe it into files, okay, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So all I'm doing here is I'm just getting the config map. I know what the name of uh, the um, config map is that I want to use. Mm -hmm. If you don't know which one it is, you probably will run it with, um, you probably will want to run it with, owner name and then you could also say status is equal to deployed so if you want to get the last deployed version of the of the release that's a way of doing it but you know if you this can happen because you may have a lot of releases in the cluster uh, versions we do suggest to try and hit the history max on that and keep them at 10 maybe 10 15 because when mm -hmm. it gets too big basically you're just eating up your cluster um mm -hmm. so i know it's called this uh that v1 uh, just make sure you, you say the namespace, the namespace is Q1, and we're going to pipe it out as YAML, okay? I know some people like Jason, some people like YAML. Uh, I don't really care, actually, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> well, as, anyway. long, as long as your editor can read it properly and you're not, you know, whatever you're more comfortable with, right? Yeah. That's all that really matters. Okay, so when we go and have a look at this, and we're in big text here now, so, yeah. So it's your normal... Config, I'm going to come back a minute because that's the important point. It's a normal config map. Um, and you can see here some of the labels we use, uh, name, owner, status, and what version mm -hmm. it is. Okay, so these are obviously uh, modified. These are obviously um, Helm-specific um, labels mm -hmm. uh, to give us information when we're processing um, the data and stuff. You have the name, you have the namespace, and really that's of interest. But the big one we want to look at is what's inside the data. Uh, field okay and we have a, a release uh property within the data field and it and basically it's uh encoded gibberish gibberish <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> now i'm gonna i'm gonna say this because sometimes i have to say this and uh i have to repeat it and it confused me even more than the first time i said it so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna try and explain what this object is we okay. call it an object. Will you call it an object? We call it data, what this data is, okay? Okay. So this data, to start with, is a protobuf object, okay? So mm -hmm. Helm 2 uses gRPC to communicate between the client and uh, the tiller service or daemon in the cluster, okay? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's in a different process running somewhere else. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
And what Helm does then when it is when he wants to store the information in here, first of all, he gzips it, okay, mm-hmm. to shrink it down, archives it down, and then it base sixty four encodes it. Mm-hmm. Did I explain that better than I normally do? I think does no, that actually, actually no. make sense? That actually did make sense. I mean, it's obviously not human readable because it's gzip down and then base sixty four encoded, but yeah. it's it is a blob of data. A blob yes. of data, yeah, for want of a better word. I yeah, think uh, I think you, you hit that neatly. Actually, I'm going to learn more from you on this than the other way around. I think on this. So, uh, all right. Thank you, JJ. <laughs> this is why this is kind of like the magician, and if the magician's assistant, that the assistant is actually really the the brains behind the whole operation. You know, they just, they're just, <laughs> just there was a this magician called uh, Paul Daniels. I think I think okay. the poor man is dead now, but uh, he had an assistant called Debbie McGee. And to be honest, I often wonder was she. The one that was actually helping him <laughs> the other way around, exactly. or you know, was she actually running the show as well as helping him? Like, you know, so anyway, I digress. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so good. okay, one thing I'll say on that then. So, right, we've got this now. So, as you guess, we want to get that blob of data out. Okay, mm-hmm. so a good practice with this is you know, and we'll do you know what? Actually, I'll do it here because uh, it's, it's probably going to happen if I don't. Uh, take a backup of that. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, and I've used a very um, uh, kind of uh, modern yes. technique to do that. Okay, <laughs> the, the most secure way known to man: the dot yeah. back file <laughs> in the same directory you're in, where you could host everything. Uh, yeah, uh, we're in the one system that could go down. Uh, exactly. There we go. Okay, so you might want to become get a more sophisticated backup version <laughs> than what I'm using there. Now, we probably won't do it here, but this will be important later on where we decide to play around with the data because what can go wrong will go wrong. You're talking about a blob of data mm-hmm. encoded and gzipped. Uh, yep. Yeah, there's a lot of problems with that. In my opinion, there's a lot of problems with that. <laughs> okay, so here is a thing to note. Okay, I did mention that it was, that it was a protobuf object. Mm-hmm. So that in itself is defined by schemas and that needs that is also encoded okay, okay. so you have an encoded object that's gzip and in, and base 64 <laughs> encoded <laughs> okay so you can see now where you know i'm saying these things because i'm going to put a command up in a while that you'll say what is that for <laughs> okay you know uh yes and this is the reason behind it no here's another reason okay Mm-hmm. And we're going to do this, okay? So, if you're going to do this, you need to grab the protobuf schema for Helm uh, when you're in V2. This is V2 only now, folks, okay? There mm-hmm. is no protobuf object in, in V3. You need to grab that. So, I'm basically defining that environment variable now. So it knows where that schema is. And this is going to be important when I run the command, you'll see. And you also need to grab the uh, base protobuf schema as well, okay? So these are, um, so generally I have the, the Helm, the, for the first one, the Helm protobuf schema, generally I have the Helm um, uh, code base on my system anyway. So mm-hmm. I, just, I just clone that down. And the other one is a clone down of the, of the protobuf um, base schema for want of a better okay. word you'll get that off the um the github uh, org basically out there Got it. uh and i'm going to show a doc in a while that gives you information for a different reason but i'll show you later on remind me of that later on uh, when we get near the end uh, jj if that's okay will do so what i'm going to do now is uh i'm going to run this command now i know i can use grep straight away but i'm going to run this because i have this handy so what i'm doing here is i'm going to grep uh, the release uh, field from the data property of config map. All right. I'm going to base oof. 64. Sorry. I'm going <laughs> no, to... I'm saying oof. Oof. That's, a, going... that's, a, that's a command. Like you were saying, that is a command. <laughs> oh, that is a command. No, I can get rid of the cat here. I know that, but I'll just leave it for the moment. Okay. Uh, I'm going to base 64 to code it because it was base 64 encoded mm-hmm. in the outside. Mm-hmm. I'm going to unzip it because it was zipped. Mm-hmm. And then I'm left with a protobuf object that's not readable because it's encoded. I am then going to call proto C 
all right, with the two schemas and ask it to decode it uh, based off the Helm release proto, proto buff object. Okay. Wow. Okay. And uh, is there anything else on that? And then I'm going to just pipe it into a file called decode uh, with uh, <laughs> a, a, a post fix of decode. Okay. So <laughs> this is another reason why I didn't type the commands. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be here yes. for a week. All right, yep. let's let, let's run this. All right, because I'm just talking too much rubbish really at this stage. So uh, yeah, okay. All right, let's have a look at this object or this um, data now. De decoded we... data. So this is the decoded data. So this is the Helm release object. Okay, in its okay. in its fine in its finery, for want of a better word. So you can see here, there's a lot of information in here. Blah blah. blah. Okay, so why does inf Helm keep this information? It keeps this information so that it can run commands like upgrade and rollback. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is it keeps the, we, every time you run uh, an upgrade or an install, so a deployment command for want of a better word with Helm, it needs to keep the manifests that you used at that time, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's often been questions about why why can't it just reference, you know, previously out on the command line and all that on the file system? And sure, don't you pass the chart again when you're doing an upgrade or whatever? Yes, you are, but that's the current version of the chart. So when you install the chart first, maybe you had, I don't know, a replica set of one. And then the next time you're doing an upgrade, you made it five. Mm -hmm. So Helm needs to know what was it deployed as. So that's where it keeps its information. So that's pretty much it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Any questions on that? No. It's pretty, okay. Seems pretty pretty straightforward. So there you go. There's where your release information's in there. Mm -hmm. If you went and deleted that now, for example, uh, mm, we have a lot going on. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you went in and decided to remove one of these, okay, mm -hmm. you just went cube CTL delete you know, config map, whatever. It's gone. Mm -hmm. And when you go hell and less, it's not going to be there anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. So the reason why I wanted to show this today was not for that reason, and uh, I would say don't do that unless, okay. unless you get advice to do that or, you know, something has got totally hosed up in your release and you do that mm -hmm. and it fixes it. Um, mm -hmm. Why you do that is that if, if people sometimes go hell and less, and they cannot find an old API chart, that's chart. Mm -hmm. So they deploy then a chart with that name and they get an error saying it already exists. Uh. You can come in here and see what is in there. Mm -hmm. uh, is this actually a config, a config map, you know, created by, I don't know, Cube, kubectl or something and just happens mm -hmm. to be a name you wanted to use or what is it? And the thing is as well with Helm v2, people always ask this, why can't I use the same release name? You know. I'm deploying it into a different namespace. Yes, your Kubernetes uh, resources are going into a different namespace, but unfortunately, your release metadata was going into the namespace of Tiller. Sure. Uh, and that's why the changes happen for V3 on that, okay? So this is a good place to look. Also, if you have more than one Tiller instance, obviously, you need to go to different namespaces because, mm -hmm. you know, they're separated from each other. Um, okay. Uh, how does that sound before we kind of go on to something else? Real quick, you said multiple um, instances of Tiller. How many times have you seen someone actually do that? Ooh. I have seen it uh, personally, straight, mm -hmm. uh, physically in front of me, no. Uh, indirectly from questions out on, um, in the Helm community where someone has said, look, we segregated things up by having different Tillers instances. Mm -hmm. uh, that was what something someone found as good for their scenario or their use case or, or their environment. It's not something, you know, the Helm community had recommended or anything else, you know? Um, okay. So I would presume he was a way of segregating things. And then he was also a way of using uh, the same release name uh, mm -hmm. differently. Okay. Now, the point with that is, you know, obviously if you get carried away, and you, you know, you start going multi-layers of Taylor instances, 
you know what's going to happen. Eventually, your trust is going to get, you know, thing. But uh, that's where I came across it. Uh, there's probably more instances of it out there. But yeah, but I haven't seen we, it firsthand, for one thing. We, we have one comment saying that uh, somebody has ran, ran 50 tillers in one workshop cluster, which makes sense. If you were teaching how to use Helm, you'd, you'd need multiple editions of tiller for everyone to be able to learn how to use Helm, which makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense. But that's actually nice to hear. Okay, Th thanks <laughs> to that person that sent that in. Uh, uh, that was uh, that was Paul again. Ah, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it, but this is going to go down as like, do you know what I mean? We'll find out yeah. here that uh, you only actually have one person that attends your uh, your streams, <laughs> and that is Paul. Paul, Paul. <laughs> and Paul has just come today because you gave him like I know hundred dollars or something and a slab yeah. of beer. I don't yeah, want to yeah. go because that guy is talking. Ah, oh, come on, Paul, <laughs> just come for the talk, please. <laughs> okay, so uh, Paul, I owe you a beer then, obviously for turning up. So thank you. Uh, right, let's go on to something else. Uh, what we do? Do you know what we do? We what do we do? What do, we do? He said he was cheap, but it was only twenty bucks, by the way. <laughs> oh, what's it? 20, twenty bucks? Aren't going to get you far. Uh, going to be drinking some cheap beer with that stuff. Um, okay. Um, right. Let's. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do now is will I deploy another? Yeah. Let's. What I'll do is. Um, So, folks, you can see here I'm, I renamed the binaries as Helm 2 and Helm 3, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I find that useful if you're keeping the two binaries under one system. Um, just be careful. Over time, and we'll get to in a while, migrate over because, you know, um, you will walk on top of yourself after mm -hmm. a while. You mm -hmm. will get confused. You know, it's like anything, you know, two things running at one time. It's just not good, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yep. But... Um, yeah, so I use Helm 2 and Helm 3, basically. Uh, that is the only areas where Helm 2 and 3 can kind of walk on top of each other is the binaries are both called Helm. Uh, mm -hmm. So obviously, if you pull one down on top of the other, there you go. Or put them in a different directory or an alias or something. So these are aliased. Uh, Helm repo list. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, that is, that is poor, isn't it? Why didn't I add the repo list into that? Uh, now, I'm going to have to go out here, folks, because I never think of the name for this. Uh, Paul will probably send a command in there. Uh, so. so I'm going to add just the basic chart repository, even mm -hmm. though uh, this is going to be this is, um, I suppose, is going to be um, eventually moved on to more the Helm Hub and stuff like that and people mm -hmm. uh, hosting their own chart repos. But for the moment, I'll just pop this in here. So some people say you should know every command off the top of your head. No, no, I, I got a notebook that's, of commands. Uh, I can't remember all this stuff. That's what I think copy paste is for. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so Helm to let's install uh we just call it my SQL right? mm -hmm. Let's deploy that out. Okay. We're only briefly gonna look at this. Uh yeah, that's gone out there. Uh, and we deploy that into the default namespace. Now, you know, default is default here, if you know what I mean, um, because it's a basic um, uh, kind cluster, uh, the default namespace just happens to be called default. But mm. what I mean here is that if you change your, your cube namespace, for example, if you use the tool like kubeNS and you go to test, then it'll deploy it into uh, the test namespace, if you know what I mean. So it's your, so not your default, say it's your current namespace it's going to go into, okay? So this is another aspect to look at as well, that um, Helm and kubectl access the cluster the same way, okay? And what I mean by that is they use kube configuration, okay? So whatever your kube config is set up and your context and so forth are set up for kubectl, then Helm will run the same way, okay? So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes people get caught with that. They're going, well, you know what I mean? Why didn't Helm work in, in that cluster? And then you realize that they were actually, you know, 
they were referencing a different cluster in their configuration. Mm -hmm. So always, if you're ever trying to figure out what it should be, kubectl is a good way of testing or look at your cube namespace or whatever your context is at that mm -hmm. time, okay? So that's just one mm -hmm. thing to, to watch. So if we go now and we do get config, JJ, if I'm taking too much time on anything, tell me there, no, no, or great. if I should if I should be on something else, just just no, no. This is this is yeah. great. Walking through the, all of this stuff to understand how all of this comes together is extremely valuable. Yeah. So what I want to show here is you can see here now my SQL comes in here, so mm -hmm. you can see it works whatever way you're doing your install or whatever. So yep. all right, let's let's move along. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to change gears slightly because we're going to go do comparison in a while. Okay, mm -hmm. so. I know this is going to be slightly confusing, but let's let's change up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now one last thing there as well. Um, one last thing. That, no, that's okay for the moment. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to use Helm tree. Okay. Okay. Um, and if I could type. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we don't have anything deployed. No. One. Two. Two main differences for Helm Tree. Number one, there is no tiller anymore. Okay, so you don't have this service anymore running in the cluster. You don't need a gRPC across. You don't need protobuf objects. Um, you don't need to be. It's not going to be storing information in the namespace of your tiller instance. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And what else? Oh yes, namespaces are important. So as you saw earlier, when you did a Helm LS, it was calling out to the Tiller namespace. So that mm -hmm. means regardless of where you, what namespace you deployed your application into, it was always going to get back from that Tiller instance namespace, okay? In mm -hmm. this situation, it's different. When you go Helm LS here, it's actually going to um, use the, your current namespace context. Does that okay. make sense? Your current namespace. Yeah. 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 So in this situation, uh, let's use a nice little cool. Do you, do you ever find when you use kubeNS, do you ever put a D in it? So you call it K-U-B-E-D-N-S. Or is it I, actually, actually I've, I've alias kubeNS to the NS command. So I don't even type oh. kubeNS anymore. Just so when I'm oh, okay. changing namespaces, I type NS and then namespace, which makes oh. my life a little bit easier. For some odd reason, 80% of the time, I call it cube DNS. Uh, <laughs> nice. No, that maybe is just me. OK. Yeah. All right, so this is our current uh, namespace. Default, you can see it's uh, dulled out on the top. And um, I'm glad I don't have any namespaces with uh, inappropriate names or funny names. So <laughs> <laughs> that goodness for that. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, that made me laugh. Sorry. I just... <laughs> all right. Let me get back to it. Okay. Um, okay. So all that's looking at fault. So if we do something like this, then I hope I have something in here, but I mightn't have, unfortunately. No, I don't. Oh, no. I had a mistype of No, that's all oh, that name space. No, that's correct. So when I ran the first command, LMLS, I would only see uh, my current, uh, the releases that were applied into my current namespace, which is called default. When I do it, all other namespaces, it's showing me all of them. OK? Yes. So yep. there is a, that is quite a big difference. OK? So let's go and install something with Helm Tree. What do you think? Sounds good. Uh, I have this again, don't I? Actually, do you know what? I'm not going to go typing because you, people are just going to say, does he really type that slow in real life? Uh, <laughs> I can hear Paul in the background going, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is, isn't he? Yeah, I think he saw oh, me yeah. at a conference once typing. <laughs> uh, still don't know why he didn't have a... Here, here's a fun fact to you. I, I never, ever use, uh, you know, speaker notes in my slide oh, deck. Okay. I used them once, and uh, they couldn't show the speaker notes. So, <laughs> nice. so nice. I've just decided to myself that speaker notes aren't for me. Uh, yep. But there we go. OK. I, I, I do find them very distracting myself. Um, but there is one, one thing a speaker, speaker coach told me once that has stuck with me, which is if you're not going to use your notes, be sure every third or fourth slide 
just put the word breathe on it to remind you to take a moment to breathe because when you're speaking, you will forget to breathe. I thought that was, that was a pretty pleasant thing to, to remember. That's a lovely thing, actually, yeah. I, I'm going to take that on board now, actually, because I'd say I haven't come up for oxygen in the last while, so um, I'm going <laughs> to take a breath now. Okay, <laughs> so this is nice, though, JJ, because you know the way you do, uh, especially now we're doing talks uh, virtually, mm -hmm. okay? Yep. They're grand, but sometimes, yeah, I, and I saw comedians talking about this. Comedians at the moment are trying to, you know, like everybody else, they're trying to, um, I suppose, change the way they are, try and change the situation. So they're trying to mm -hmm. do, you know, podcasts or whatever they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And they said it's killing them because a comedian works from the energy of its audience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they're in a venue, they'll work off that. But you're sitting inside in your own place, talking away to yourself. It is hard. No, yep. this is good because, you know, I'm talking to you and stuff like that. But do you oh, find yeah. that... A stream is a stream is, is super valuable to at least two people on it because you play off of one another. Because to speaking to a, a webcam on, on is sometimes uh, rather depressing. I'm not going to lie because you you don't know, and because there's also a delay too. Um, if you don't have real time communication back for, back and forth, you, you never know what's going on here. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay, I digress, but let me go. So this time we're going to install, and you see there's a slight change in our um, in the nomenclature for the install command. You no longer use dash dash name. You just give it the name, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's the name, here's the chart, your namespace. So that's come up a few times with people. Why, and I think we pulled that back in. So you can still use dash dash name as far as I know. But why mm -hmm. we did this was we want... There was a lot of changes around Helm 3, or not a lot of changes, some changes on the CLI to be more like kubectl, okay? Mm -hmm. So a few little things that happened. So just an FYI for you, uh, if, if you come up against that. I think maybe we've sneaked it back in as a hidden, a hidden flag, but look, I think it's better move over to this. I think it's a nicer format, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So let's hit that, and let's hope that deploys. Okay, it's deployed. No, we're not. I'm not going to test this time if that's okay with you yep. to see that Nginx comes up. We'll, we'll assume it works because I want to get into more stuff instead rather than mm -hmm. show we can run curl, you know? Um, yeah, of course. Oh. Okay, so I ran LS, Helm, uh, Helm 3 LS here. Nothing came up, uh -huh. and it didn't come up because we talked about not, it a minute ago. This is, I need to stop. Yep. Yeah, I need to stop that habit, actually, of doing the intro to the magic the rabbit <laughs> I'm pulling out. Because now it doesn't seem as, as good. Anyway, <laughs> so you can see here now that now we begin to see here. Hang on here a second. I didn't get it when I did an LS. I'd go all namespaces, okay? And then mm -hmm. if I do something like this. Will I get it? I get it. So now mm -hmm. our releases, our release metadata seems to be tied to the... Um, to the namespace, okay? Mm -hmm. Our mm -hmm. deployment objects are still the same way, which are the Kubernetes objects that have gone out. They'll still go into their namespace, if you know what I mean. So if we do, um, uh, I get all, uh, and we go, demo dash one. When we look in here now, hmm, what did we deploy out there? Oh yeah, we. what did we call it? Uh, inst2, sorry, okay. Mm -hmm. I lost my train of thought there. So you can see ins2. So I've deployed it in the same namespace as uh, the as uh, the Helm v2 uh, mm -hmm. app, which is called ins1, and it's in there. Okay. So we want to look at now where where does the differences come in here? Okay. So mm -hmm. what I mentioned earlier was we use secrets now in Helm v3 by default. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's a bit more than that because I said you could use them for v2 anyway. So what that meant was, so that Helm 2 and Helm v3 could work side by side, mm -hmm. we also had to have a change of the, the nomenclature for the secret name, okay? Just mm -hmm. in case somebody used secrets in, in, in v2, you know, they'd walk all over each other, all right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what we're going to do is do a quick look now at how it looks this time, okay? So what I'm going to do is rather than show all of them, I'm just going to go right out and get the one we looked at. So two things here, you can see here that, first of all, we're getting a secret, as I mentioned, but also that the labels have changed. Owner is mm -hmm. now lowercase, and it's now owned by Helm, not Tiller mm -hmm. anymore, because Tiller's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that was an easy one, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we actually, I think that was still sitting around in the code one day. Someone did a graph and found it, by the way. So it's amazing <laughs> how things hang around. And the other one is the name is small as well. The uh, property name, basically. Mm-hmm. name. Um, all right. So, and you can see here that the name now has a prefix of this, which seems a bit unyielding. And uh, the idea behind that is we want to kind of um, keep it in context that as we go forward, uh the release versions may change and we want to keep on top of that that if we change how the release object looks and the properties look in helm 4 then we call that uh sh.helm.release.v2 and so on and so on Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's a bit unyielding but obviously you want to avoid um conflicting with some other uh tool or whatever in the cluster that may do something similar uh absolutely and then you can see the second half of it is the same as V2. It's back to the release name dot V1, V2, V3, V etc. up along. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, the type is no longer opaque. The type now has actually a type. Uh, mm-hmm. So that can be a value if you want to use it. Um, okay. So, all right. So straight away, we have a change around the name. We're going to use secrets by default. Then what's under the hood? Okay. That's really what we want to see here now. What's the difference with uh, what is the release object now that's stored inside in this um, in this secret uh, object? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so yeah. let me explain this one. Okay, because I'm going to probably have to. <laughs> here we go again. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, so in this situation, it is... Um, a YAML object mm-hmm. that's gzipped and that's base64 encoded. So the, the, instead of just a section of the data, now it's the complete YAML file gzipped base64 encoded. No, it's a it's the release object, so which is a, a YAML type object. Um, okay. Um, so let's yeah, let's just call it a Go object. That's um, that's probably a better way of describing it. Um, so it is the whole release object, uh, not every bit of it, but most of it, um, uh, gzipped and base64 encoded. Okay? okay, so it's no longer using the internal protobuf object. It's just using the you node, know, the Go object that's in there because we no longer need gRPC. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now one last thing on that because it's now stored in a secret. It's got a second. Be base sixty four encoded on it, so <laughs> okay. base sixty four encoded twice. No, that'll come funny in a minute because someone is going to go to me. But your base sixty four decoded it twice. Why did you do that? <laughs> so, right. Okay, all right. So let's go and get it this time. Okay, right. Uh, JJ Asker, yes, sir. You you are now in the big seat for a million dollars or so. Uh-huh. Okay. Is this going to be a longer command or a smaller command than the V2 one to get the data out? I think it's going to be longer because you're going to have to decode it twice, as you just said. Okay. I, I'll go with that. Okay. Right. Let's get this, let's get this guy this time, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, We've... Wow. No, well, really? no, that's not the command yet. We're only getting the object oh. first, okay? So, yeah. All right, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, are we going to back it up? No, we won't bother backing it up this time. No, we won't, because we're not doing anything nasty with it. So, all right. <laughs> so, well, let's have a look at the object. Uh, so, it's the same again. It's a mm-hmm. blob, as you say. And then it's a secret object. And you can see the only difference this time is the labels are a bit different. Mm-hmm. And the naming, obviously, and stuff like that. So, that's grand. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we have the command, which is the one you said is going to be longer. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Uh, I thought I had this command. Uh, Shoot. One second. Give me a second, JJ. No worries. You have no lost worries. my train of thought. Um, uh, 
I just uh, pinged the channel to see if anyone um, had any questions for us while you were looking for that, so we can kind of yeah. fill in any, any of the gaps that people might have about the different systems. Oh, okay. You don't have any music for when somebody gets totally lost? <laughs> no, unfortunately, I don't. I do okay. have some good... There we go. Here we huh? go. <laughs> I do you know one of those uh, moments of like uh, this I'm afraid here like you know um, mm -hmm. okay uh, right uh, okay so um, so the command is much shorter basically because wow, really we is. no longer need to do uh, any protobuf decoding um, ah, so that's what makes uh, it easier and you can see here the two base 64 encoded the, the first one comes automatically from being a secret object and the mm -hmm. second one in is because we encoded and there's the gzip and uh mm -hmm. all right let's hit that okay mm -hmm. and let's have a look at that object now okay so you can see here look it's a json a yaml whatever you want it to be okay mm -hmm. it's json really um but it's 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 yaml spat out into uh, into text really like and you can see here there's some funny bits here and uh, around the data and that's more to do with uh, particular um, files, basically, that, that are stored mm. and dumped out, okay? So that's the, mm. only, the only difference for that, okay? Uh, all right? So there's not a lot to see here. It's basically the same, same style of information, but it's slightly different, okay? Um, so the object itself differs from Helm 2 and Helm 3. Now, trying to look at it here isn't going to be very helpful, okay? So what mm. I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of this, all right? And uh, is it okay if I pop up a uh, VS Code instance? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, let's see what I got. Okay. Can you see VS Code? Yep. Is it large enough? I'll make it just a tad bit bigger. There you go. That's funny. That's funny. It's, is that a bit too big now, or is it all right? Yeah, it's a little too big, yeah. Okay, let's see. Shorten it down, basically, you're saying to me. There you go. Perfect. Is that okay? okay? Yes. All right. This, okay. So, what I'm looking at here is, um, so as I mentioned earlier, the, the object itself that was stored inside in the config map also differs. So, how it's wrapped up, et cetera, differs in the naming, but also the release object itself differs. There's not a one to one mapping between your V2 and your V3 object. Okay. okay. Even mm -hmm. if you extract it out as being a protobuf and being as a, you know, a Go object or JSON object, they differ in their fields slightly, and also the mappings. Okay. Now, I couldn't find any nice way to explain this except um, there's the plugin. Uh, so when you want to go, and we're going to look at in the migration in a while. Okay. So when you want to migrate from Helm to Helm v2 to v3 and you want v3 to now manage your Helm v2 objects okay you mm -hmm. obviously as we described earlier you're going to need those objects to come out of the tiller namespace and get put over into the namespace of the release to start with okay mm -hmm. they'll need to be encoded slightly different they need to be stored as secrets and finally the object that's stored within it needs to be slightly changed okay mm -hmm. and uh, there's a plugin for that called the Helm uh, 2 to 3 plugin Okay, mm -hmm. we we'll, we we'll look at these kind of things near the end, or will we put it up there now? Uh, let's see. Let's put it up there now. It might be as easy. Uh, okay. Can you see my browser there? Yep. Okay. And we're going to talk kind of about the migration stuff in a while. Uh, but as I say, if you want to migrate over your configuration and your your releases, etc. Uh, this plugin will give you the information. So I think you know most people can read. So you head out there, mm -hmm. have a look at it, and see what you think and what it can do for you. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So um, what I'm looking at here then in the uh, – which I've lost. Uh, what I'm looking at here in, um, in the VS Code is I'm looking at a piece of the code here that does the mapping in that plugin. Okay? Mm -hmm. So – we're going to give a quick look into it just to show people that, you know, it's not a case of just pull out the object and take the information and shove it over into the other one. It's, there's not a one-to-one -to, -one to that, okay? Um, mm -hmm. So looking, looking down through this, all right? So um, th 
this basically is the entry point into it. And mm -hmm. the first thing we'll come up is map the chart. Okay. So mm -hmm. we look down here and we'll see there's a series of functions being called, which gets information like V2 Fiji chart, timestamps, the change, status, the hooks, etc. Um, and then also so many information can be pulled off straight away, like the notes and things like that. But you can see here through the rest of it, you're looking here in the code where different mappings are happening, okay? Where the mm -hmm. metadata has to be mapped because some of it is not one-to-one. -one. Some of it are, but they're a different style object, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes the whole ways down along there. People can have a look in the code. It's, um, I suppose why I'm showing this is that, you know, things slightly differ as well around the statuses. How status was defined in V2 and V3 is different, you know, mm -hmm. It used deployed, it used um, underscores, that slightly changed the dashes and smaller um, smaller case. And then the events, how they're pulled out of it and stuff like that. So I suppose the reason why I'm showing it is it's not a one-to-one -one mapping and it's not an easy way to manually pull it out yourself and do it. Uh, right. I think it's probably impossible to do in a manual way um, mm. or even try and code it. But as I say, the plugin is there and that will do that for you, okay? So I just wanted to show that to just show you know, how the objects differ because I couldn't see any other nice way of showing how the properties, because mm -hmm. sometimes you look at a field and it might look the same, but it's now stored, it was stored in a different way, in a different object mm -hmm. and needs to be pulled out of that and so forth. Okay. Uh, does that sound all right, JJ, or any questions on that? No, no, this this was good. Um, and I I shared Helm, so Helm slash Helm dash two, two, three as the URL for people to see that, that plugin, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Or if they just look for Helm 2 to 3, that'll, okay. that'll they'll find Perfect. that, yeah. Okay, so, all right. So we discussed a bit there about the, the differences between 2 mm -hmm. to 3 and so forth. So now that you want to do a migration, okay? So um, we have a doc. Do, 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 do. Back again to the browser. Um, if you go into Helm docs, is that big enough for people to see it as I kind of browse along? Yep, yep. it looks pretty good. Uh, and if you go into topics, so just be aware there's two docs, okay? If you go into Helm docs, which is helm.sh.docs, that's the V3 docs, okay? And if you want the V2 docs, they're easy to get. You can just go Helm. Like that. Mm. And they're called v2.sh helm.sh slash docs basically so awesome so it's v2 dot is the prefix to the uh, url uh, for difference you can also get it from inside here uh, but just click on a link you should be able to pull it down yeah you can pull it down from here if you click on that on the drop down there there you go mm -hmm. okay so you can see there's a nice little drop down here as well um uh, yeah because a guy called ronan uh, has done a great job with the docs and so forth. He works on the docs and he does that uh, from time to time. So he's, he's kind of vamped it up, really, hasn't it? Look at V2, V3. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. kind of sexy, really, aren't they? So, yeah, yeah, they really are. It's good. Yeah, I think it's nice. And he's done a really good job as well with the community page as well, uh, health.sh. Nice. So I'll just put that in there in case people are ever looking for the community page and what it looks like. So... So here's the community page. And remember that Helm org contains a number of projects. Uh, it calls Helm Core, which we're talking about today. It's got the charts. It's got Chart Museum. It's got a, it's got a rake of other stuff. So go in there and have a look. And if you go down here, you get lots of good information. Um, so have a look in there if you're looking for. So this is your kind of your one-stop shop for the whole community. Mm -hmm. for want to nice. okay. All right. Um, um, sorry. Would you suggest, would you suggest joining um this the slack organization for real-time communication or do you think it's better to go through like issues or something like that like if i want to engage with the helm core community what how what's the best way to get get things uh, escalated yeah i'd say both ways um um uh, jj uh mm -hmm. definitely get into slack because what's nice about slack is you can even if you you're you know you're a bit uh, hesitant to put anything out there it's a great place to listen in on like so it's kind of yeah. it often reminds me of IRC was the same as well. And mm -hmm. the first time I started using IRC, it scared the life out of me, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of used to, you know, 64 character systems. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't write a lot in text. 
I keep it fairly mm. tight. Uh, mm -hmm. I talk, but I'm not great on text. <laughs> and I found it just unbelievable. You'd be talking to someone and then eight people would come in on top of it and they'd all be in. Mm -hmm. And that's a bit eerie at the start, but after a while it actually becomes brilliant because what often happens then is somebody jumps in and just actually gives you the information, you know, or helps you with it, you know, and everyone's having a chat. But it's nice to listen. It's like being in a cafe over, you know, doing people watching in a cafe. It's kind of like yeah. that. Nice. And the issues is good as well. So I'd say use both and whichever feel right. If you're only asking questions, I'd say ask the questions in Slack first because opening okay. an issue for just a question, you know, is probably a bit of overhead. You know, and it might take time to get the answer. Whereas maybe in Slack, it's easier. If you're not getting anything, then maybe raise it as an issue or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Why did I go here? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go back to it. Uh, how are we on time, JJ? Are we okay? Uh, we're doing great. It's, uh, it's, it's all up to you, man. We're, we can go as long as, as short as you like. Okay. Till eventually, like, the gas starts running out of this, uh, yeah. this machine. Yeah. It's going to go. happen eventually. Um, <laughs> How was your early morning? Are you still have you recovered? Uh, no, um, I am. I, I the the talk that I did this morning surprisingly went okay, um, but I'm just going to be frank and say there are some webinar software out there that is still stuck in the '90s, and it's <laughs> it's uh it's unfortunate that we still have to use some of those things. So uh, yeah, but how are you feeling? Are you st you still still going? Like, are you you kind of feeling feeling the pace? Uh, I've had. I've had already uh, one rock star and two cups of coffee. So uh, my mind is going at a, a million miles an hour. <laughs> okay, let's move along here. Uh, so if you go into topics and go to migrate and Helm V2 to V3, we have a doc here on migration, okay? I would suggest you try and read this and give us feedback, okay? Because mm -hmm. we try and make this as best as we can. And it's only people using it will improve this, I, I honestly think, always. Because you'll find the, you know, the nuances or the uh, edge cases that we won't find. So yeah, please, mm -hmm. please do. So wh what I'm getting to hear is, and I probably, I must put a bit more work into this, or if anyone wants to put a bit of work into it, please, please reach out. Um, so when you're migrating across, I probably just discussed this. Um, there's probably two use cases really. Um, and one of them is called a strangler pattern. And the other one then is just in situ or on the fly or in the cluster. Okay. Uh, have you heard of the Strangler Patron, uh, JJ? I've heard of it, but it'd be nice to get a just a quick explanation of it for anyone who hasn't. Yeah. Heard. Okay. Yeah. So the Strangler Patron is where you manage your migration yourself, and what mm -hmm. I mean by that is, you have your two versions of Helm running side by side. You obviously had Helm V2 first because I don't know why you'd go back to Helm 2 if you start with Helm 3. Mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. So you have Helm V2 running first, and then you um, have all these releases deployed. As we showed earlier, Helm V3 cannot see these releases, okay? So they cannot do anything about them, okay? They can manage them, they can upgrade them, delete them, whatever. So what you do in this situation is you want to be in control of the whole migration. You want to phase it out as much as you can. So what you do is you phase or, or you or you squeeze out that Helm 2. So what I mean by that is any new deployments, any new releases you want to deploy and install, you use Helm 3. Any ones that are currently in V2, you manage them until the end of life, okay? So over time, you will squeeze them out till eventually you come to um, a watershed where basically, you know, we don't really need V2 anymore. I'll just delete those last few ones and I reinstall and we'll be okay. Got it. In that situation, you don't really keep the history you had. All you're doing is moving it out, cleaning out, getting rid of what you had and then, mm -hmm. and then starting a new. And the other one then becomes your de facto. And then eventually you just delete everything out yourself. Okay. Got it. The other one is where you do it in situ on the fly, where you ask, you transfer the information over to Helm 3, you transfer the history, and basically, you once you're happy, then you get rid of that particular release from Helm V2, and then you eventually clean out Helm V2, but you're not deleting or getting rid of what you had, you're, you're just moving it over to Helm V3, okay? Mm -hmm. um, that is the one that the plugin does, uh, the second phase. It's the one where you ask the plugin to do it for you, so that's why we produce the plugin, so that you could migrate over because as we showed earlier, when we 
when we delved into the release object, it's not something you want to be playing around with, really. You know, um, <laughs> you know, um, I don't think you could map it over easily, uh, JJ. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's just too many little nuances there that unless you were deeply into the Helm community, you would probably cause more problems than uh, just using the migration path. Yeah, and then with the migration plugin in is, you know, it's part of the the uh, Helm org. So, you yeah, know, right. we have some support behind it. And it's a thing that one day will, I don't know, I think we'll all be happy when it goes end of life because that means then everybody's come over to Helm tree. But, you know, that's going to take time because people run systems and systems, you know, production systems take a long time to, to make changes. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look a bit at the migration and migrating stuff over. So let's look again at what we put into Helm tree because I because I have forgotten what we've done. So, <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, I forgot this. Okay, so right, all right. Let's go for this. So, I don't know. Have you heard of Helm plugins, um, JJ? Um, only since you just mentioned the Helm two. Two, two, three plugin. I have not. I did not know of any others. No. Okay. So, just brief background. Helm plugins is is a framework in Helm which allows you to write um, code that can be run by Helm that's not part of the Helm core. Okay. So, essentially, what it is is it's like add-ons that bolt, and you can run a Helm command and call this plugin, and the plugin does the work. Okay. So mm -hmm. I suppose it's kind of like, I don't know, maybe if you had a tool that data mines and has a load of collectors that collects mm -hmm. the information, it's not a great simile, really. It's, yeah, it's probably a poor simile. Anyway, mm -hmm. it's a way of you being able to write these things, have them on the fly, and uh, be able to call them as you go along. Okay? So, so, so it's, a way, it's a way to extend core into doing other specific jobs that you don't always need, but are there in case in case you might need them in the future. You, you are the Debbie McGee of this, really. You are just showing me <laughs> up. Like. That is beautifully described. Uh, in a nutshell, that took me about four sentences that made no sense, and then you wrote one. <laughs> one. That's it exactly. And uh, we we often do that actually because um, someone will want to put something in the core. And we say, look, it's a good idea, but you know what? It's not a good idea inside in the core code base. Uh, would you mind writing a plugin? And there's a framework behind it to write the plugin, uh, hooks and stuff like that, so it can be installed and things like that. Yeah. Sorry, you were going to say something. Sorry, I came across. You. Oh no, it's 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 uh, it, it's it's a it's a yes. And the plugin the plugin architecture is 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 extremely powerful in general, and it's great to see that it's become you know it, the Helm community is appreciating it because it allows you to extend it and also you're paying it forward to your point. If it's a great idea, you're, going to, you're not gonna need it in the core one because not everyone's gonna need it. But if you need it in the future or someone else needs it in the future, they can install it and build from it. Yeah, so. and some core, some plugins have ended up making their way back into, um, ah. into it as far as I know now. I don't have one yeah. off the top, because I know you're gonna ask me name one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't have one off the top of my head, uh, but I'm fairly sure one or two did. Okay, awesome. so. When we do a plugin list here, when you go Helm plugin list, it tells you the plugins you've installed into your system, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and these are the ones I've installed. Oh, no, actually, because I have a couple of versions. All right, so, sorry. Mm -hmm. I have three <laughs> separate versions of Helm running, and one of them just happens to be Helm. God <laughs> darn it. And it's, it's funny because one day I was after making some changes, and I kept running Helm, and I goes, What's happening here? I, you know what I mean? I made the changes. Why is the binary not doing it? It was the wrong binary. So there we go. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, yeah. So I have two to three diff in Flask and map QAPIs. So we're going to use the two to three, okay? And mm -hmm. uh, do -do, just jumping back on the two to three. Did I get rid of the two to three? I did. Mm hmm. You can actually get it from here. Uh, what am I talking about? Yeah. If you go down to the bottom to references, you get it. <laughs> Wonderful. It's, this is when you write a doc and you, you forget where the references are. <laughs> anyway, um, so you can see here, the idea here is you can bring configuration releases, et cetera, open. So 
one other thing that changed in Helm 3 is how this, the configuration state has changed. So what caches or whatever uh, and what configuration that Helm has. For example, the plugin list, your local repository list, etc. They've slightly changed in Helm 3 and the paths they go into. So you need a way to convert them over. The plugin does that also. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not going to show that today, but generally, um, I think down here, there's a, um, yeah, it's important to read read me beforehand as well, because this is one area where you can hose your helms, mm -hmm. helm two mm -hmm. and helm three. So it's important to know what you're doing when you're doing it, to take your time when you're doing it. Okay. And um, yeah, it talks about the different ways, you know what I mean? You can do the, um, the uh, config and it says about doing the config for so do a backup do your backup migrate your config your releases and then when happy clean everything up after that mm -hmm. now we've added a few things because people have give really good input into this and they went hang on your second i know you have a nice cleanup and what the cleanup does is it gets rid of all the releases that mm -hmm. uh, helm 2 have it doesn't go near the helm 3 stuff or the kubernetes object so when we do a migration over like this this is one other thing Kubernetes objects don't get touched, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just the release metadata, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's just, it, it's, 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 it's management of that from three and two. And um, in the cleanup, it also gets rid of Tiller then for you. But someone said to, then someone came in with, hang on here a second. I would like to, you know, move over a release, call it uh, Bambi. I move mm -hmm. over Bambi. Um, I then, you know, try it out in Helm 3, make sure everything's working right, and then I'm happy. I then only want to get rid of Bambi. Mm. I only want to change this today. So we thought there was two set of use cases, and now we found there's a hybrid mm. where people want to bring some over and keep some and then do it, you know, bit by bit by bit. Mm -hmm. Now, we would say in the short to medium term, that's okay. The medium to long term, we'd say, you know, pick one or the other because mm. one day you will get confused, like I did a few minutes ago with the different Helm versions running. Um, it does I have catch four up. versions of Helm running on my machine. What is going on? <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there you go. Okay, so yeah, that's a few things on that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at. Uh, can you see the terminal there? Yep. So we're just going to concentrate on the convert part, which is moving a release over to Helm 3 so Helm 3 can see it. And, you, and then we look and see, look, the two releases are still there, you know, and then we clean that up. How does that sound? Mm -hmm. Okay, so all this talking keeps making me confused. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll do the inst one because I think we call the other one inst two. So just, would this happen? Yeah, so just bear in mind too that if you have a release name already out there in a particular namespace in Helm 3 and you do a convert over and that name is exactly the same and it's going to go into the same namespace, you will have a clash if that mm, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. So just be aware of that. The other thing to be aware of too is if you run Helm 2 and Helm 3 side by side, as I said, if you change the binaries, they can't walk all over each other. One area where they can walk all over each other is if you have a chart deployed in Helm 2 and those Kubernetes objects are out there already with that particular release name, release name and you then deploy them into the same namespace with Helm 3, it's going to come back with a conflict because it's going to tell you those Kubernetes resource objects are already created in the cluster because mm. they have the same names. So... Mm -hmm. Or if you're using cluster-wide resources like CDRs, uh, that will clash as well. So just, just to be aware of that, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do a convert of that. So let's, let's have a look at the help. The help. Uh, uh, there we go. Maybe I should do, have done um, the commands written out for this. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it might have helped. Um, okay, you can see you see the commands here. The main one is you give it the release name. Okay, mm -hmm. but some other things to watch out for are these. Okay, um, and the ones that I I point out is you can basically 
change the cube context and your cube file on the fly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can also um, change if you if Tiller is not using the default cube uh, system, you can give it what its Tiller namespace is, mm -hmm. um, which is important. And also, you can give it the release storage type. So by default, it assumes that uh, V2 is using uh, config maps. If you happen okay. to be using secrets, you need to set it to be secrets, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, how this will manifest itself is when you try to run it, it'll go, I cannot find that release. Mm. So it's not going to do any damage. It just mm -hmm. won't find your release. So just be aware of that, that there are a few things to watch out for. The other one too is some people ran Tiller in V2 as Tillerless, i.e. they mm. didn't run it in a cluster. Uh, this is the flag you want to use for Tillerless, okay? Because... Mm. Why you want to use it as Tillerless is, um, is because you need, to, um, you need to tell it that it's not in the cluster. And sorry, I was wrong here, and I should know this. The release storage flag, you only need to set that when you use Tillerless because uh, when it's, Tiller is running in the cluster, the code can go and ask the cluster, what, uh, conf what, I can ask Tiller what uh, backend it's using. Is it secrets or config maps? But when it's running Tillerless, it cannot ask Tiller that. Mm, so you have to yeah. tell it explicitly then, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, this is why, you know, I put that sentence. This is only used with Tiller out cluster. Yet I didn't read my own uh, release. <laughs> okay. It's all good. So that's slightly embarrassing, but uh, there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Uh, let's use this because I am I'm burning your ears there, uh, JJ. Okay, now I should have maybe ran the dry run first. So we have a dash dash dry run flag and that'll show you what's going to happen without doing anything, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't, I ran it straight. So you can see here, it tells you what it's going to do. Now, we only happen to have one release version. If there's more than one release version, it'll be, it'll be, uh, it'll be uh, outputted here, okay? So mm -hmm. you'll see one to N or whatever. There's also something in there as well to limit the amount of ones that you want to uh, bring over, okay? That's mm. the flag, release versions, because let's say you have 100, which is huge. Y you probably don't want to bring them all over. So if you yeah. say 10, it'll take the last 10 of, mm. of that, okay? The 10 the newest. Latest. Yeah, the yes, latest. the newest or latest, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's about it then. So the information's gone over. So... So First of I'm going to hit the button. I'm going to hit the button. Yes. Because we converted, right? Is yeah. That, well, no, right? no, we, we haven't proved it. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. <laughs> so hit the... Do you have the... <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Uh, I think that's the button, yeah. <laughs> this is like being on a game show. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we really need to prove this, that this is here, yes. okay? Absolutely. Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, all namespaces, right? Yeah. Dash dash. Dash dash. Oh, damn, damn. Is your eyesight better than mine? <laughs> You're from a distance. Okay. Yay. So it was in one, wasn't it? Yes. Look at the date on it. 1411. Uh, yeah, we're using UTC. So that would have nice. been kind of where we started, wasn't it? Around that time. Yep. 10 past 10 past your time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and I also said it is still there. Yay. So it's still Sweet. over here as well. Nice. So, so what you have at the moment is you have both releases. So you have Helm 2 and Helm 3 managing a release called this. All right. No, they are separate release objects, so that's safe. But just beware, they both point to the same backend Kubernetes resources that are deployed. So this is where I say, be careful. Mm -hmm. You can't have two, two managements here. You are going to, you are going to make a mess of it. So, yep. so what I'd say here is now, this has now gone over here. So if we look at our secrets now, uh, let's get rid of this. Of course, I got the longest command to get rid of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, get secrets. Oh, yeah. 
In spaces get you every time. Do you know that? Oh, yeah, every time. No, oh. actually, mi minus n. Yeah, let's go minus n. What did we call it? Demo dash one, was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, so you can now see we now have this 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 one in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, and you can see it came in three minutes ago. All right, Perfect. so it's a new, spang new release object with all the data mapped over from the V2 version into here. Okay, awesome. so you should still be able to do an upgrade, all right? So mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to temp phase an upgrade. What do you think? Absolutely. Let's see, let's see it work. Okay. Now, when we did this, I did it from a different directory, so let me go into that one, all right? Mm -hmm. So the chart is in over here, okay? So let's go with it. And I'm going with this for a reason, because when you create a chart with Helm V2, mm -hmm. its chart API version is called V1. Mm -hmm. And yes, this is, gets a lot of people. <laughs> and in V3, its chart API version is V2. Um, so, really? Come on, man. <laughs> I, well, the reason for this was Helm 1 and Helm 2 did not define it an API version, okay? Uh, so by default, we had to assume V1. So in V3 then, we had to use V2. It's ugly. Yes, that is, that is a very good descriptive word of that situation. <laughs> that is, it the is least we say, the better. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's go and install this because oh, we want to upgrade it, isn't it? What's it's mm -hmm. called ins one, wasn't it? Yeah, because it's ins one we brought over, wasn't it? JJ, mm -hmm. let me see. What did we convert over? A converted over inst one. Okay, so basically we're going to do an upgrade. Uh, if I can get over there. All right, will we go for it? Yep. Let's go for it. Failed has no deployed releases. Mm -hmm. I do not like that. All right. Oh, no, you don't need to slash there, but I just like putting it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yet again, person mm -hmm. is taken out by a namespace. Oh, <laughs> no, we don't want that. See, folks, this is where it trips you up. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, that minus in is just we're gonna have to do something about that actually. I, I, I see I thought something came up with that. Yeah, we'll have to because it's tripping me up now. Okay, let's go for it now. Yes! Wait a minute, don't do that music. We no. have to see, did that work? Helm tree LS. Oh. No! Same space. <laughs> uh I even type now. Worth waiting. <clears throat> okay, so that's gone to two now. Okay, up Yay! here. Wait a minute, let's check the cluster. Okay, let's get mm -hmm. the secrets. And then finally, let's see if Helm 2 is on version one. Okay. Yay. Yay. Yay, it's there. And finally, <laughs> ah, you're too early. Nah. <laughs> nah. And Helm 2 is on version 1. Okay. Revision 1. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, here is what I say is a dangerous time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have version 1 over in Helm 2 and the whole lot. What can mm -hmm. be the problem here? The problem here is this. We upgraded. And even though we haven't gone under, we didn't go into the charts and change the Kubernetes objects, uh, the artifacts that we were deploying, the Kubernetes objects, it's a different version of the objects out there, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. even though they didn't upgrade because we're in a kind of a, I suppose, a, a fake kind of a situation where we didn't change anything. But that version of Helm 2 is no longer pointing the same resources it deployed the first time. Does that make sense? I think so. One more time. One more time. Okay, so... So we installed with Helm 2, uh, Nginx demo, ins1. Yes. And then later on, we decided to migrate, and we migrated it over mm -hmm. to Helm 3. So yes. the, Helm 3 in, uh, the Helm 3 release and the Helm 2 release of Nginx demo ins, they point to the actual 
objects that were deleted, uh, or sorry, the Kubernetes uh, objects resources that were deployed. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. However, we went in Helm Tree. Let's say we went into the chart in and we changed things around. Mm -hmm. Let's say we we put in I don't know a sidecar or we did different things. Okay. Mm -hmm. We, we brought in a secret object into it. We changed the amount of replica sets, you know, so on. We used a newer version of Nginx, all right? Mm -hmm. And we upgraded using Helm tree and that called the Kubernetes API service and that made changes to the resources out in the cluster, the Kubernetes resources, mm -hmm. okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I'm with you. The problem here is now, Helm 2 still has the instance object it no longer points to the deployment, the resources it deployed. Uh, so it's, it's almost the equivalent of like a, for lack of a better term, a split brain, where you have two instances of the same resources in the, in like it, Helm 2 is looking at the older version when you've moved Helm 3 ahead. So now they're, now they're out of sync. Yeah, they're out of sync. But the, the point I made here is Helm 2 thinks it's pointing still to the same resources. Got it, got it. Yes. And it is, but the problem is, if you ever try to upgrade with Helm 2, mm -hmm. there's going to be differences, okay? And Helm 2 didn't do three-way switch, uh, three-way merging. It did two-way merging. So it took the release object information as its, its, its Bible, so to speak, mm -hmm. or its, 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 its main uh, thing, and it didn't look at what changed in the cluster. Excuse me, in the cluster. So there'll be differences. So... You know what I mean? You, you don't want to do it like, you know, that kind of way. So Understood. what I'd say, once you're happy and it's gone over there, you then want to do. Uh, uh, and I've forgotten the command. Uh, mm -hmm. clean, clean up. That should be easy, really, shouldn't it? <laughs> There's an arg I want to get here because it only went in not so long ago. Um, okay. Dash dash name. Okay. So beware if you run this without any args, just Helm 2 to treat clean up, and you mm -hmm. say yes to the questions. Are you sure? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. It will wipe everything out for you. So mm -hmm. Helm 2 will no longer exist. Its releases, its configuration, and tiller will all be gone. Oh, nice. Uh, there is no way back from that, by the way. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're at that point, though, wouldn't you, like, you're, it's like you're doing your final steps, like you are cleaning up. You should oh, not yeah. be thinking about Helm 2 anymore, right? Like, yeah, no, shouldn't. but I just want to put that out there in case someone just yeah. runs it to, to figure out what it does. Uh, don't oh, do that. Yeah. You can <laughs> use point. dash dash dry run if you want, mm -hmm. okay? So I'll use dash dash dry run here a minute because actually it's probably a good thing when you're deleting stuff to use it, okay? To just mm -hmm. make sure you know what you what you're at. Okay, so what it's saying here is it's going to delete release, what you call it, data will be deleted. So the data or the release object of that, and if you say yes to that, mm -hmm. it'll go away and say it's deleting it, okay? It's Wonderful. saying it, it will be deleted, but it's not, obviously, because we're running dry run, okay? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm happy with that. Are you happy to get rid of it? I think so. Let's do it. And let's run it as Helm Tree. <laughs> 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 See what I mean? This gets mm -hmm. confusing. Let's go for it. All right, we're going to delete it, are we? We are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's now said it's gone. So let's go to Helm 2 LS. It's gone. Wait. Yay. Let's get config. Excellent. <laughs> Burns. Um, <laughs> all right. Got me there. All right. It's gone out of the config maps as well. Would you go? What? Hang on. What about Helm 3? Hmm. Uh -huh. I have you in here. Yay. Yay. It's still there. Okay. Yep. Brilliant. And second revision also. Yeah. So it's what, it's what we're expecting. It's what we're expecting. And if we <laughs> go even to, let's. Right. 
and you can see that it's Kubernetes resources are still there. Basically. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So as I say, when a migration happens, the Kubernetes resources do not get touched. Okay. Um, and you can see here that the time is way back to about an hour or so ago, mm -hmm. be over an hour ago, because we, even when we did the upgrade, we didn't change anything. Mm -hmm. So do you know what I mean? Even though we called upgrade, we didn't make any alterations. So the pod didn't need to be uh, restarted mm -hmm. or recreated or, or what you want to call it. Yeah. Okay. So that's migration. Any questions on that before? I think we have a final bit in if we still have time, JJ. That's uh, up to you. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's finish this off. Um, yeah, let I've me get watching... a bit of water and you do a bit okay. of talking there for a second, please. Sure, yeah. Um, uh, if anyone would like to answer any questions, I've been watching the, the chat. It looks like people are um, pretty, uh, we've gotten relatively good views. And um, we are going to post this also uh, on YouTube after the fact. So if you did miss it and you just came in recently, um, please don't worry, you can watch from the beginning. Uh, uh, in the future. Uh, hopefully it'll be up today. We'll, we'll see. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to go for the final one. This is the one that, yeah, this is the one that could be the hairiest. So let's see mm -hmm. what we do on this. Will we go for it? Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> all right. Uh, what am I doing with this? So this time we're only going to, so what we're going to look at here is um, the kind of scenarios come up in the community where, uh, I don't know if people know, but uh, Kubernetes can change APIs from release from minor release to minor release. So yep. this happened between 2.15 and 2.16. Now, the deprecation policy is there. The notices are sent out. So it's not just, you know, the guillotine goes down and that's it kind of, mm -hmm. kind of approach. So, but the only thing is, it does catch a lot of people by surprise because generally you expect APIs to break in major releases, not minor releases, mm -hmm. but yep. this yep. is what happens. Okay. Um, and a series of APIs. So when we create, uh, I suppose the best way to do is look at, is look at something here. Do I have something I do? Uh, so I'm going to look at uh, I have a particular. Um, so again, I just used, um, um, <clears throat> I just used um, the scaffold chart and I just mm -hmm. made a few alterations to the scaffold chart. So when you use um, the scaffold chart at the moment, it will create the, the current supported uh, APIs for deployment, uh, ingress and all that. Mm -hmm. But there are charts possibly still lying around there or you may have used charts where that it APIs that were on the deprecated list are due to be deprecated. And you may have those releases still in your cluster. Um, mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if, as I say, some of the, the APIs change, and I'll give you an example from 15 to 16, where suddenly these APIs were removed totally. So you can no longer use them. So mm. uh, it, I don't know if, You've gone into a Helm chart before, haven't you, uh, JJ? Yep. Looked at yeah. Yep. So we're going to look at one of the templates. And one of the templates is, as I said earlier, it's your, it's your, um, it's really a Kubernetes manifest file with some um, um, uh, Go uh, YAML template. template on top. Yeah, basically. Go template. Yeah. So a little bit of extra so sauce on top. So mm -hmm. it is the way that gives the port to Helm the ID. You can extract your configuration from your templates and you can run it with different instances and different names mm -hmm. and set different properties on the fly. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. very like a manifest file though, so to speak. All right, so if we come in here, so this is like probably like any deployment file you've seen before. If you haven't seen them mm -hmm. before, there's a few things like include and all that, but we're not gonna go into that. But what we wanna look up here is these two things, okay? So this, these are the different APIs for the different objects. So in this case, our object or our kind is deployment. And its mm -hmm. API version is apps.v1. This is wrong, actually. Okay, that's okay. I'm in a, so that is the current supported version, uh, apps v1 for deployment, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if that's your chart, it'll install no problem. If your releases have that in it, there will be no problem, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here's where the problem is. And I'm so glad I used a different directory. Uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you get confused. Definitely. Uh, uh, I was looking at it going, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, now, if we look at this version of the deployment file, you can see again, it's a kind object, but this time the API version is called app slash v1 beta one, not mm -hmm. app slash v1. So in Kubernetes uh, 1.16, apps slash v1 beta one deploy uh, for the deployment kind was was removed not just mm. deprecated it was removed okay so what that means now is if i took this chart into a 1.16 cluster it will not deploy mm -hmm. okay so let me show you uh da, 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 da. we're going to use helm tree okay mm -hmm. and uh oh no. mm -hmm. Okay, so I have two kind clusters running, okay? And I really should have a cube context to be flashier, but uh, I'm going to do an export here if that's all right with you. <laughs> uh, and if we go Helm 3 LS here, let's just see what I have in it. Uh, do all. So you can see here, that's another thing when I was talking about the context and stuff like this. You can see how Helm swaps the context here exactly like kubectl does. So I export my kube config to a different uh, cluster and no longer we can see any of the releases we deployed, okay? <clears throat> mm -hmm. So what do I want to do here? I want to do a Helm install. So we're just going to use Helm tree in this, okay? Because I don't want to be going through the different types and, yeah. and stuff like that. And it's easier just to do it this way. Um, and if, if we're looking at Helm right now, we should be using Helm three anyway. So yes. this is a new instance of a different Kubernetes cluster. We should be just naturally thinking of Helm three. Yeah, so I'm going to call this, yeah, I call it the same name, okay, and I'm just going to use the, oh uh, man, could get information about the resource, stop, don't tell me, oh uh, no, uh, nope, I won't, Let's go like this. Yeah, it's in order, basically. Okay, let's go with that. Okay, you're going to get an error like this. Okay, mm -hmm. this is not a very nice error. Okay, mm. uh, and I must have an older version of Helm in this because, oh no, why isn't that? Why is that coming out with that? Okay, mm -hmm. so what we've done is uh, I uh, put in a nicer error message here uh, to say that this is a removed API and give a bit mm -hmm. of better information. And then this, uh, for some reason, whatever version I've, of Helm on this, it is not showing that. So I might just have an old version or I might be on a different branch at the moment because I was testing stuff today. So I might be on the master branch, okay? So uh, there you go. Happens on live TV, but we go it with does. this one. It's all good. <laughs> okay, so if you ever see something like this, uh, unable to recognize, blah, blah, no matches for kind deployment version. So what the last part really is telling you is, look, there is no API version for, there's no API version apps as V1 beta 1 for the kind object deployment, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's telling you it's not there. So you can't install that in there, okay? But I can install it into 1.15, because 1.15 didn't remove the API, it was just deprecated, okay? So mm. I'm gonna install that into 1.15, okay? And I wanna show something then after that, okay? If it'll work for me, okay? All right, All right let's go back to our 1.15 cluster, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go that context. All right, let's do that install again. Okay, same thing. Lo and behold, it installed. Now, I don't give to, yeah. need to give any namespace this time because I said I'm using the current namespace, so I'm okay with that. All right, so that deployed. So, all right, JJ. Mm -hmm. Why did that deploy into 15? Because this will tell me I explained it incorrectly or correctly. It's because the V1 beta 1 API is still there on 15, and it was completely removed on 16. OK, great. You know, and that, this is confusing, like, you know what I mean, for people. And if you look for 
Kubernetes 1.16 deprecated objects, you will find information on it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Does it come up? Yeah. We won't go into it because we're probably up on a good amount of time at this stage. What do you think? Or will I show it? It's up to you. Okay. Do we have a, will we eventually be thrown off this channel? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. So if you look for, I think it's called Kubernetes. Is this where you tell me in 1.17 they bring it back as version 3? No, no. <laughs> so if you look for deprecated Kubernetes APIs, removed it. In 1.16, you get a lowdown of what was taken out, okay? Oh, there it is, the deployments right there. Yeah. Where did they go? Right there, beta 1v1. Up, down, down, down. Down, down. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. There's a load more daemon sets, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it, daemon, whatever your... your, your um, your beer is okay mm -hmm. that's grand all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at so that's in there now okay mm -hmm. what we're going to do something here is we're going to go in the back door and deploy out into 1.16 okay a, a correct mm -hmm. version with the correct api but then we're going to go in we're going to remove the release map and we're going to put the incorrect version into the release data so helm thinks it deployed it as mm. Ava won't be one. So what we're going to do is we're going to create artificially, we're going to create a scenario that's happening, people. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll explain it then when we do it. But that's what I'm going to do, and then I'll explain why it's that way. And uh, how does that sound? Sound good? That sounds, sounds good, yeah. So let me quickly uh, do an export. Mm -hmm. So we have to go back to 16. This is where it gets slightly confusing. We'll go over and back a bit. And this time, we're going to call it the same instance, all right, because we want to play with it. And remember when I went into the wrong directory first with the correct APIs? Mm -hmm. I'm going to install that. There you go. That's on 16. No. Uh, let me just make sure you know I'm on 16. Yes, I'm on 16. I'm glad I gave it nice names like kind of 15 and kind of 16. Because <laughs> I did get confused one day. I gave them names that didn't match. Yeah, really good. So Helm Tree LS. Here we go. All right, we have both of them there now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to 15. Okay, 15. Okay, we're on 15, and we're mm -hmm. going to get the secret information for it, okay? Now, I think I wrote the commands out for this. Uh, they're going to be the same as we had earlier, like, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, what did I do? I didn't give them the same names at all. Uh, there we go. There you go. What did I call it? I call it demo, didn't I? Yep. Oh. Uh, while, while, while you're working on that, I just want to mention, um, I did put inside of the chat, if you're wondering what kind is, um, I went ahead and linked you to the STIG website of uh, Kubernetes in Docker, uh, which is what KIND stands for. Um, it's a great way to do CI, CD with uh, Kubernetes and also to do some development and play around with if you want so. So take a look at it if you have. Um, it, is, it is extremely powerful. Thanks for that, JJ, because I didn't, obviously I didn't give any so what I'm just doing is what I did here earlier when I was showing getting the release information and we're mm -hmm. going to extract it out and so forth, okay? Uh, we'll keep a copy because, yeah, we want to copy this time in case. We, no, we don't actually need a copy of this one. Okay, I don't actually need any of this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me see. I'm losing, I'm losing it up here. Uh, okay. So wait a minute. All we need is this, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we've done here is I've just decided to pull out the release information and dump it into a file, okay? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over back over to 16 and I'm going to upload the release information for my object, for my release on 15 to 16. Mm -hmm. So what it means then is it will now have release information that is using the old deprecated API. Okay, I think I'm with you. I think yeah. I'm with you. And then I'll tell you why I did that, uh, okay. if that makes sense. Mm 
Okay, so um, 116 now. So what do I want to do here? I want to. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to. This is where it gets a bit weird. Okay. Um, for want of a better word, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to. So I'm going to remove the secret information for this, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to remove its release information, all right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go Helm Tree LS, and it's gone, okay? Yep. No, the Kubernetes objects are still out there in the cluster. So if you ever do something like this, Helm doesn't know it anymore, okay? It doesn't know what existed. So essentially, you've orphaned your Kubernetes resources from your helm. Can, can you sense. do a kube cuddle um, yeah. uh, get pods dash dash all name or and just so we can see that just to make sure. Not that I don't trust you. It's just, you know, we want to see that this stuff is of course, there. Of course you don't trust me. Uh, <laughs> there okay, there we go. There the go. rem yeah. demo right there. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But uh, so, so, I think I think you're right not to trust me. I, I don't trust myself <laughs> on this one. So all right, so what I'm gonna do is do a very simple thing now where I'm just gonna Cube apply the file. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Gonna call that file. Uh, okay. That's applied. Mm -hmm. Yay. Mm. There we go. Because at the end of the day, all I've done here is I've dumped the release file the release mm -hmm. metadata for that release out into a file from Helm 15, come into Helm 16, deleted the release metadata, and just uploaded the one that I brought from 15. Mm -hmm. Why did I do that? I did that because now, and we look at it in a while when we take out the data, but we'll show it straight away. What I've done now is I've done the equivalent of somebody has had a cluster and they've had been deploying their releases. Mm -hmm. Let's say one of the charts was using a deprecated or old APIs for a while. And they have a release at this moment, uh, Helm release at this moment that's using the old APIs. And they decide now to upgrade their cluster to 1.16, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After they update into 1.16, they now have these release objects in, in their metadata. They're, they now have the metadata or the release objects that now contain removed APIs. So when I decide to now go, uh, where's my, yeah. So if I decide to now go upgrade, mm -hmm. here's what will happen on an upgrade. Now I know you're saying I'm using a different um, chart pack, but they're exactly the same for want of a mm -hmm. better word, except the different things. So if I go upgrade now, I get the same issue here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you say, why does this issue come up? This mm -hmm. issue comes up because Helm needs to do a comparison with its current manifest against the cluster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it takes out its current manifest information, which is the last time you deployed, it passes it to the Kubernetes Go API and says, right, here is my, my, my kind objects, here are the APIs, etc. And it goes, Name up. Sorry, I don't know this API. Mm -hmm. This API does not exist. So a lot of people say to us, "Hang on, you just have to update the chart." I am using the current version of the chart with the with the current uh, supported API. It's just that the state of Helm the release contains the old version, so people mm -hmm. are caught. Yep. Now, the way around this is, you really need to do an audit here that. First of all, any releases you have, you need, to, you need to see what API versions are using. And before you upgrade to the next cluster version, okay, or Kubernetes version, you need to do an upgrade with the latest version of the API. So you need to do an upgrade on your chart, if that makes sense. Yes. Otherwise, you end up in this state where Helm 
gets into an indeterminate state with that particular release because it can no longer, Kubernetes uh, Go API will no longer accept when it's trying to do its operation, if that makes sense. So you're basically caught, mm -hmm. in other words. Mm -hmm. Now, this, uh, people have been caught by this since the change has happened. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have got caught because they've old versions of the chart or just they forgot about releases or whatever. It's, it's a hard thing to get caught with. Now, there is a way around it, okay? And we're going to have a look at that, all right? If that's okay. Sure, absolutely. So what we're going to do is, we're going to do this again. I'm going to get rid of the old one. Uh, so we're going to do pretty much what we did the last time. We're going to do, um, we're going to dump out the uh, release object. Mm -hmm. We're going to modify the release object. And then we're going to delete the release object and put in the new release object. You can do an upgrade as well if you want, but that is far more complex, but we'll do it this way. Okay. okay. Um, sure. So this is the manual way of doing it. You can script it or whatever if you want after that. So mm -hmm. let's dump this out first. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have that file, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly what we did earlier when we went into the object, uh, got the information out of the object and showed the release object from within the secret uh, or the config map, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, remember, we're doing this for V3, so it's slightly different to V2. So this time we're going to do a backup, actually. Are we really doing a backup? Uh, no, we want to do a backup. We should have done a backup earlier before we did the delete. This time it doesn't matter, really, because we have the old version anyway, so... And it doesn't matter as much here because, you know, I'm not, as I say, I'm not on, um, I'm going to change these so I don't get confused. This is where you don't follow your notes and then you, <laughs> and you have to go and change them inside in it. Yeah. Anyway, these things happen. Uh, oh. Okay. So let's do a cat of the decoded. Okay, there we go. We got mm -hmm. that. Okay, that's all right. Now, this is where I say it may work or it may not work, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, let me see. Let's see if... The, all right, so here you go. So <laughs> mm -hmm. this is what you want to run. <laughs> oh, good God. God, yeah. <laughs> good God. Now, obviously, there's people out there with better... Um, better scripting than I am, uh, mm -hmm. you know. But here is a way of doing it. Don't come to me and say, I use awk or I use something else or I use this. Look, <laughs> there you go. All right, it is what it is. And a lot of good people, I've held my head off, a lot of people out in the community came up with this. They found ways around this, etc. And then we could not find a good solution in Helm to handle this. So mm -hmm. I'll talk about a plugin at the end that does this rather than do it this way. Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this isn't for the faint hearted. This is for the, mm -hmm. this is for your, um, your advanced super um, uh, scripting people out there. Okay. Yep. So my sure. hat's off to you. All right. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. But yay. This is where <laughs> your notes are wrong from your, <laughs> I presume I was supposed to be smoother on this switch channel. Was I? Uh, <laughs> or, no, on this no, switch. No, yes, no, it's fine. This is, it, okay. It happens to the now, best of us. Now, here is the one that, look, this may or may not work. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a work. It, it can, look, something could be a bit out here. If it doesn't work, I'm just going to leave it for today. All right. Because uh, okay. I'm, 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 pre I'm getting to, I'm running out of juice here. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what all we're doing here now is, we took the decoded object. Mm -hmm. We changed the, uh, we just did a mapping of the API version from V1 beta one to um, V1, V1, apps V1. Yep. And all we're doing now is we're gzipping it, base64 encoding it. You need to wrap it as well, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. Because it needs to be one line, basically, for want of mm -hmm. a better word. That can catch you out. You know if you go into the, into the um into it afterwards and you see that it isn't i should pipe this to a file i'm going to hit it to the screen and take my chances oh shoot uh do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to put it in the file <laughs> because i forgot i'm using big text here i'm taking uh 
All right. Let's call this you know, foo. Foo dot. PNC. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to grab this. I hope it grabs it okay. We'll see what happens. All right. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't grab it okay, look, you get the idea. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, right. Now, what I need to do is I'm going to go back to. Uh, my original file, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to replace the object that was in there, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Nice one. It didn't like uh, the size of the screen, I'd imagine. Uh, what? Yeah, no, no. Mm. All right, let's do a cat at a. Mm. Wow, something went wrong here, I'd say. Still not look right to me. Oh, good last configuration. Something a little bit weird here. All right, let's go with it. All right. We'll take a chance, really. Sounds good. Might as well. Mm -hmm. We applied earlier, didn't we? All right, let's see. Oh, we might delete it first, actually. We'll delete the previous one, mm -hmm. and then we go apply. Mm -hmm. Okay, it applied. Good. Okay, yeah. Will we see? Can I read it afterwards? Oh. Ah. Ah. All right, let's get. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> it was going too well. Yep. But I, I, th I think we saw what you were trying to do, and it does make sense how, how like the journey to get there made made sense. It's unfortunate that I think yeah, one of your it's... copy pasta, one of your copy pastas, just got a little weird. Yeah, I think it just went. Yeah, something happened there. Um, yeah, I, it, I don't know. Is there any advantage of pulling back into it? I don't think so. Um, no, what do you think? No, no, it's fine. We, we we can we can we can wrap up. I mean, we just passed our two hour and ten minute mark, so we've been can going for a little one, while. Can I show yeah. one thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, the thing I was going to show. <clears throat> oh, that's got over there for some reason. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay. So, two things actually. Um, okay. Mm. That didn't work. Okay, here we go. So if you're looking at saying, oh, no, I don't want that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So there is an open PR out there called 7219. Mm -hmm. But, and what we've done is we've our, held our hands up here saying we cannot find a good, clean solution within Helm Core yet for this. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can see there's manual steps you can do this, but you, as you can see, something can go wrong um, mm -hmm. when you're doing it. And, you know, you will get it working. You will get it right. Just make sure you back up parts on that. Mm -hmm. So what, we, what we've done on it is we have um, put a doc on this. And uh, I'm not just showing you docs for the sake of showing docs, okay? Uh, but... But here's a doc called Deprecated Kubernetes APIs. Can you see that, JJ? Yep. And this will give you a whole background and a rundown to this issue and mm. what has happened with it and everything like that, okay? Also, 
it runs down the manual steps to do this that I've been going through. Okay. Nice. Wonderful. Uh, if you find an issue with them, give us a shout and stuff like that. But as you can see, it can be an issue. But more importantly, rather than do it manually, there's an automated way of doing it. So yeah. it's currently in my repo, but um, we'll see if we'll put it out into the Helm Org repo at some stage. Um, mm -hmm. um, but have a look at it, and it's just called Helm Mac Map Cube uh, APIs. Mm -hmm. And really, all you have to do is you just have to run uh, Helm. Uh, all you have to do is run Helm Map Cube APIs and the release name, okay? Mm -hmm. And what that'll do is that'll um, what that'll do is it'll um, map it over for you, okay? So an example of it is here. It works for both V2 and V3 because they're essentially two different um, entities as we looked at it. They're two different release mm -hmm. objects, so they need to be different. Uh, there's also a doc. Um, and I'm going to put my head on the line here if it's gone up yet into. Um, uh, I don't know if it has made it up here. Is it um, no, it's not here yet. It needs to be rendered into it. But if you look at inside in, here's the. Um, the markdown for it, okay? So if you go into um, into the um, into now it's bringing you into kind of a into the dev v2 branch, and you go into docs, you'll find a doc in there called Kubernetes APIs, or do a search basically for Kubernetes APIs that markdown, and that explains it from. It's pretty much the same, except when you come down to the manual steps, how to use mm -hmm. it. Uh, which you'd expect because you have the proto buff and all that. Yep. So that's a way to get around that. I only wanted to show this because this is a real world example that's happening for people. Uh, mm -hmm. They're getting caught when they, when they move up into the clusters and that look, there is a way around it either manually or use the, the tool to do that. So um, I think that's about, that's about it for me, sir. Um, uh, let me see. You said you wanted to bring... I don't know where I put that doc. Um, all right. Um, details, RTF. Hey. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, that's about it. So, yeah, we played around. Do you want to you, you, do you wanna summarize the whole thing? Uh, or do you want me to do it? Oh, you go ahead and so, summarize it. Um, yeah. yeah this, this, uh, I, I felt like I learned a lot. What did you get from it, actually? Is yeah, no, um, I, learned, I learned a ton. Uh, which is, uh, I'm first of all, I'm, I am uh, in a good situation where I don't have to worry about a, a lot of V2, but now I have an, uh, a good empathy and sympathy now for people who are stuck in that world between V2 and V3 and the things that you have created to make that life a little bit better. Um, now, now I feel like this, this whole lesson that we went through today, this whole, whole exercise, we can reference when people have issues when moving from V2 to V3 because you've, you've caught some of those user stories, which allows us to um, say, okay, don't worry, there is a path to get success to, to get success out of this. So I, I feel like this has been very well put, put together and uh, I, I'm, I look forward to helping out the, the Helm community with this. Yeah, I think, I think you're right about one thing, um, JJ, you do get trashed by the end of this, don't you? <laughs> Because <laughs> you get it's kind true. of, you do get, um, you get kind of engaged in it, and I, I, I'll admit, having somebody like yourself is great to bounce things off, and um, you know, it kind of gives you energy and a bit of whatever. But I feel trash now, actually. So. Yep. Trust me, you're gonna want to walk away for a little while and kind of just uh, stare at a wall, just because it's, uh, you, you never realize how much energy just takes from you, you know, streaming, and especially because a lot of this, all this. Oh, what you've shown is really, really technical stuff where you really have to use your muscle memory or your, 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 your mind and how much, how much energy it takes to really produce this, show this off, and be able to willing to um, pivot and ask quite, when questions show up. So absolutely. But uh, Hickey, I really do feel like this, this was great. And I, I want to thank you for your time for this. No problem, JJ. And Thanks for getting me on. It's my first stream, streaming <laughs> situation. So there That's you go. Great. Well, um, 
I'm, uh, we don't have many people watching right now. People have just kind of slowly but surely petered off. Uh, but uh, how, how can people reach you if they have questions? Pinky, what's the best um, way to get to you? I suppose reach me out on, on Slack. Uh, mm -hmm. Wait a second, actually. This is where, where you ask me on Slack because uh, what am I calling on Slack? Uh, that's a good one. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, I'm assuming in the Helm channel on the Kubernetes Slack is probably the easiest way to get to you. Yeah, you catch me as M Hickey, M H I C K E Y. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, catch me out there. It's probably the best place. Or my uh, my Twitter handle is M Hickey Bot B O T. Okay. So it's not a bot. Perfect. It's me. But... <laughs> Sounds go. good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I guess I guess as well we'll say goodbye. Um, and thanks for everyone for watching. Uh, and we uh, will have more streams later. All right. See you, folks. Thanks. Bye.